Hey everyone, Angus Wong here. And before I go any further into the video, I want to make sure that everyone understands that this is not a full flight in-depth analysis of the brand new Optolong L Extreme filter. Um, and the reason for that is because my pre-order copy of it just arrived yesterday. So I am actually going to be using this for the first time uh, and sharing it with the rest of you guys. So there is no way for me to provide any in-depth analysis, but I'm hoping uh, what I would do in this video is actually talk about um, some of the reasons why I decided to uh, purchase the Optolong Ultimate filter and talk you through my thought process for tonight's session using this filter. And I hope that the combination of me discussing why I purchased the filter and uh, how I plan to image with it will give you enough of an insight for you to decide whether or not this filter is going to be a good choice for you. Now, a full flight in-depth analysis uh, video will be coming up uh, in the coming weeks, maybe even a month, but um, I think that's gonna be uh, appropriate because at the moment, unless you pre-order this, there's no way, and I'm sorry to say this, there's no way for anyone else to even buy the Optolong L, uh, L Ultimate filter. And I don't think you'll be seeing these on the used market anytime soon. So um, that's why I think, you know, splitting this into a first impression, first light, and then follow it by a in-depth analysis at a later time point, it's, uh, it's appropriate. And I hope that you'll come along with me tonight to um, check out my first session with the Optolong L Ultimate. All right, so we have some sunlight left. Um, so I wanna take a moment to talk about the Optolong L Ultimate. And also, um, for the purposes of this video, moving forward, I'm only gonna say Ultimate when I'm referring to this filter. I'm not going to say Optolong L Ultimate all the time. So I wanna take a moment to talk about the Ultimate filter. Uh, some background and why I think it'll be pretty awesome. And then finally, why I decided to purchase yet another Optolon filter despite having a full line of their one-shot color camera filter. Um, so about the Ultimate filter, uh, the specs are three nanometers hydrogen alpha bandpass and three nanometers oxygen three bandpass. And this will probably be one of the most important and exciting astrophotography product because at three nanometers, this is as narrow as some of the most refined, some of the most sought after single channel monochrome filter. So it's pretty amazing that they're able to put both of those uh, band passes on a single filter and make it work for one shot color camera. And um, if you haven't watched my other video about filters and why you wanna go as narrow as possible, well, that then that's because the more narrow you go, the more of the surrounding light pollution, fil uh, the more of the surrounding light pollution you're able to block out and just focus on the signal that you want. In this case, is the hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. So in theory, this ultimate filter, it should give me the most refined signal while using a one shot color camera um, and imaging a, uh, an emission nebulae. So that's a little background about the ultimate filter. So why did I purchase this? having already owned an entire line of Optolong, of Optolong filter. Well, um, the reason is because I live in San Francisco and I have some of the world's worst light pollution. And on top of that, I am surrounded by obstructions and I live two blocks away from the Pacific Ocean. So what, weather is always a factor for me because I live right by the ocean. And because of the obstructions nearby, I don't always get a full night imaging my target. Um, a lot of times it sinks either too late for me to start or it sinks 
too early uh, behind my neighbor's house and I just have to end the session. So the fact that there is now a filter available to me that will help me get the cleanest data available on the market while still using a one-shot color camera, that's really exciting. Now, I do have a whole separate monochrome um, setup, but I don't always like using that because it takes really long to set up, it takes really long to capture, it takes really long to complete an image. So it's, so the main reason why I'm using or I decided to purchase the ultimate filter is because I don't have a whole, lot of, a whole lot of time under the night sky to image the objects that I want. So with the amount of time available to me, I want to be able to maximize what I can get. So therefore, I decided to purchase the ultimate filter because of this three nanometers bandpass, it will cut out the most amount of light pollution around me and it will help me refine the signals that I want for my emission nebulae. So um, that's a little background about the Optolong ultimate filter and why I purchased it. Okay, so, um, well, it's, I want to say it's a little bit after 7 p.m., um, but we still have some sunlight, but it's quickly going down. So um, I'm just about getting ready to set up. But for tonight's session, I think I've picked the best target in order to really get a feel of what the uh, ultimate filter is able to help me accomplish. And it's going to be a target that I've imaged actually many, many times this summer, and you've probably seen it many, many times. I will be imaging a portion of the Veil Nebula. And the reason why I picked that object once again, it's because, well, it's one of the few objects that are available to me right now in the middle of, uh, of September that has both a very prominent region of hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. And the good thing about this object is that a lot of the hydrogen alpha and oxygen three signals, they don't overlap to the point where the hydrogen alpha, like most emission nebulae sort of dominates the object. And in order for me to really bring out the oxygen three signal, I have to, you know, do post editing, post editing manipulation and using uh, palettes such as uh, the HOO palette, which is sort of a false color image using a one shot color camera. But with the veil nebula, because those regions are so distinct from one another that there's hardly, well, there's not really a lot of overlapping. So I can really see what this filter allows me to do. Um, and without a lot of uh, post editing manipulation, as far as like color mapping and whatnot. So I'm sorry if you're bored of me imaging the Veil Nebula, but this is the most obvious choice for the middle of September uh, in San Francisco. So um, I hope that tonight I can pick a different region of the Veil Nebula to focus on using the RedCat 71. Um, so either way, I'm excited. Even if I end up picking a region that I've, uh, that I've imaged before. So stick around. I'm gonna go and uh, finish my setup and wait for the night to come uh, pretty soon. Okay, so it's about 8.30 p.m. Um, I actually wanna get started as soon as I can because at the moment in the middle of September, uh, the Veil Nebula, it's already pretty high up in the night sky. You can, I don't know if you can tell, but my position of my uh, telescope is already nearly a zenith. So um, I should get going uh, really soon. But first I wanna take a look at the, uh, the exposure time uh, while using a brand new filter that I've never used before. So as a baseline, when I use the Optolong L Extreme uh, with my Canon DSLR, I only used five minutes at, uh, I believe, ISO 1600, because for that camera, if I go um, if I go with a higher exposure time, I really start running into noise and you know all sorts of banding issue with that sensor uh, but i'm actually going to be using a dedicated astro camera for this session 
and with and with a dedicated astro camera i have the uh the benefits of cooling so i can actually uh, afford to expose longer and it also makes sense because the ultimate filter unlike the l extreme <clears throat> sorry <laughs> i had something caught in my throat uh like i was saying the ultimate filter unlike the Opsilon l extreme it's at three nanometers versus the extreme seven nanometers so theoretically i can actually afford to expose longer before light pollution becomes a problem but i first want to see sort of my personal baseline which is five minutes so let's take a look so this was my test shot at five minutes that was pretty good that looks really good but like i said this is at three nanometers so it's more narrow so i should be able to, to image longer before uh, light pollution sets in and get more details so i am going to go for eight minutes and i'll uh i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm gonna skip to that when my uh, when the when the test image shows up. Okay, um, so it's been eight minutes since the last test exposure. So I want to show you guys what the te uh, what the eight minute test exposure looks like and compare that to sort of my baseline of just five minutes. And um, I'm I'm pretty excited. So right here this is my eight minutes test exposure using the ultimate filter and one thing i want to point out first and this is usually a problem area for the older optilon filters such as the l enhanced and the l extreme this star right here i'm going to zoom in on it uh, i think it's commonly known as 52 sig 52 CYG, I, I, yeah. Never, never mind the uh, the star trails because I'm not guiding right now. I'm just doing a test exposure. I'm not. Now this is a stretch image within uh, Nina. It's an auto stretch. I'm not seeing much of a halo because in the past, the L enhanced and the L extreme filter would typically give me a bit of a halo on a star as bright as this one so that by itself it's already super promising so i'm going to zoom back out and now i want to compare it to the five minute test exposure that i took earlier and i save a picture of, oh well i save a screenshot of it and this is the five the five minute test exposure on the right the difference is not large but at least to my eyes and hopefully it'll show on youtube but to my eyes i'm seeing a little bit more details i'm seeing more of this fainter um, nebulosity in the middle of uh the, the veil nebula uh, i think this region is the the pickering's triangle i think uh, well let me just Sorry, Fleming's triangular wisps. Um, I'm not really good uh, with my uh, knowledge around the Veil Nebula, so if I got it wrong, I apologize. Um, but anyways, yeah, just comparing, you know, my eight minutes on the left and my five minutes on the right. I'm going to go with the eight minutes, uh, the eight minutes exposure, because this is giving me more of the, of the fainter details in the middle of the nebula. Wow. Um, I'm pretty excited. So, um, like I said, uh, I want to start imaging as soon as I can. So I'm actually going to put a pause right now and just go on with setting up the rest of the session and I'll come back for, uh, for a little bit more. Hey guys, so 
it's around 3 45 a.m in the morning um, i just wrapped up the uh, session with the veil nebula because at around 3 a.m it uh, it dipped below the uh, condo building so um you know i had to wrap it up and that's fine because i already have about i think five hours of good data that i could use to really see what the Opsilon Ultimate Filter is all about. Um, and Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm obviously uh, talking to you guys from inside my condo building uh, because, you know, it's 3.45, nearly 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm not gonna be out there uh, making a speech and waking everybody up. So hope you guys don't mind me just talking to you from within my house. Um, but I took the next half an hour or so to take apart my imaging train and uh, slew over to the next project that I want to start. And I forgot to mention earlier that, um, well, this weekend, this weekend, I'm, we're in the middle of a new moon phase. So that means I have nearly no moon interference, which is one of the reasons why I picked the Veil Nebula because uh, that O3 data should be as clean as it gets. And it'll be a good test for the uh, Upsilon Ultimate uh, to see what it can do with O3 data. Um, but as usual, whenever there's a, my uh, kittens are tearing apart the house um, and they're going after the blinds. Great. Um, as I was saying, um, <laughs> as I was saying, when there's no moon, the obvious choice is to go after a broadband target. And with fall and winter coming up, I'm starting to see Pleiades earlier and earlier. And as of around 3.15 a.m., 3.30 a.m., uh, it was high enough to clear uh, some of the obstructions around me for me to start imaging. So naturally, I took apart my uh, RadCat 71, uh, popped in the L-Pro filter, and um, I started imaging on the Pleiades. <laughs> Hi, Somnus. Thank you. <laughs> okay, there goes my mic. Okay, sorry about that. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Um, like I was saying, I'm imaging the Pleiades for the next project, so I'm super excited for that. Uh, it's about 4 a.m. right now, and my kittens are not going to sleep. Um, so I'm... I'm going to try to pack up and go to sleep. Uh, the uh, Red Cat 71 is still imaging outside, so it'll go until the morning. I'll clean it up in the morning. Um, what I want to do in the next segment of the video is actually maybe take a look at some of the individual frames from the Optolong um, L Ultimate from tonight and see if, there is, see if there's anything worth mentioning. Maybe there's nothing worth mentioning. And if there's not, a, if there's not anything worth mentioning, it's a good thing. Anyways, um, okay, it's nearly 4 a.m. I'm gonna go to sleep and uh, I'll resume filming tomorrow morning. Okay, so it's the next day and I've already went ahead and uh, gone over some of the individual images that I took from last night and I kind of have an idea of what I want to talk about, but truthfully, as I'm, re as I'm reviewing these images, there's really not a whole lot that I think I need to point out. And that is a really good thing because when you can just have an image or have a, have a session and you're going through your sub exposures and you're thinking to yourself, oh, okay, there's nothing, nothing to report here. That's awesome. And one of the main uh, concerns that I had going into uh, the Optolong L Ultimate filter is the presence or the probability of getting halos because that's always been a problem um, with the Optolong L Enhance and the Optolong L Extreme in uh, at least in my uh, in my case especially when I pair that to a relatively fast uh, refractor such as uh, the Red Cat series and I'm happy to report that if I were to take a look at the individual uh, frames I'm not really seeing much of an issue. So let me show you what I mean. Um, so 
if you go into Pix Insight and um, you use something called blank right here, you are going to be able to load all of your individual frames uh, into Pix Insight and um, basically it'll give you a preview um, of what the image looks like. So that's what I did here. And I'm just gonna pick any, any random picture here from the night. Uh, well, this looks upside down, so that looks kind of weird for me anyways. So I'm gonna pick this one and I'm gonna zoom in. And um, if I take a look at this star right here, I believe this is called 52 sig or 52 cyg this is the, the the big bright star that is hovering around the witch's broom portion of the veil nebula and in the past this star or any bright stars in general using one of these dual narrowband filters has always given me halo problems as a matter of fact, I, I think I did a video in the past to go over a, a, a Photoshop way to remove the halo. Um, but the fact that when I'm looking at this, I'm seeing pixels, but I'm not seeing a halo. Um, now, yes, my stars do look weird. Um, that's something I need to address that is completely unrelated to the filter. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll address that eventually. But I just wanna point out that just looking at the sub exposure using the Optolon Ultimate in my heavily light polluted skies, this is pretty amazing. This is, this is, yeah, and like I said, there's really not much for me to report on, so that's a good thing. What I do want to show you is a stacked version of the night, and um, here it is. The only thing that I've done, this has, this has zero processing, by the way. The only thing that I've done was to use PixInsight's uh, background, uh, dynamic background extraction to take out the background. Just so, I, just so I can see what I'm looking at. But other than that, I've done zero processing here. So, um, I mean, just look at this. This is, this is amazing data to work with. And um, so what I'm gonna do now, oh, by the way, I, uh, I thought I had five hours of, uh, of, of data, but it turns out I, I think I only have four and a half. But when you get four and a half worth of, uh, of data, good clean data to work with, that's plenty good already. So what I'm gonna do now is actually go ahead and process this. And um, I hope that you guys will like the final picture. And this is, this is gonna be my first time using the Optimum L Ultimate. And I hope that you'll like the final picture. And um, hopefully this will help you decide whether or not when this filter is it's, uh, it's available again, whether or not this filter is something that you might want to look into. Personally speaking, I am very excited to have this filter. So with that being said, I am going to finish processing this and uh, I'll, see you guys, I'll see you guys next time. Ooh, man, this is just, I, I, can't, I can't get over how good this looks. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, take care and clear skies, everyone. Bye.